Hi, it's Eva Cartman, and you're listening to the Dream Big Podcast Show, the place to go to learn, laugh, and grow. Today, we welcome Elena Favilli, the co-creator of Goodnight Stories for Rebel Girls. This is episode 142, Big Dreamers. You ready to be inspired? It's time to dream big. Welcome to the Dream Big Podcast Show. We're inspiring you to shoot for the moon, take aim and go. We bring to you amazing guests who truly love what they do. Every day they're living their dreams, and so can you. Dream big, take action to reach your goals. Are you pumped yet? It's showtime, let's rock and roll. Hi, Big Dreamers. Before I introduce Elena, I wanted to let you know that you can now get my free Confidence Secrets course, which is over one hour of me teaching you about how to develop your superpower of self-belief. This Confidence Secrets course is going to be part of the Dream Big Academy that we launch later this year. But for a limited time, we are offering access to this content for free at dreambigpodcast.com slash beta. If you're a younger big dreamer listening to this, please ask your parents to help you get it. Again, it's completely free for a limited time. So please take advantage and get the course while you still can at dreambigpodcast.com slash beta. Okay, now let's turn our attention to this week's amazing guest, Elena Favilli. Elena is a serial entrepreneur who in recent years is most known for co-creating Goodnight Stories for Rebel Girls, which broke records on the crowdfunding website Kickstarter. I'm a huge fan of these books, so it was an amazing opportunity to talk to one of the creators who had this big dream, and more importantly, turned it into a reality. As a result, countless young girls and boys are being inspired by the powerful stories of courageous women from the past and present. As always, we have show notes at dreambigpodcast.com slash 142, where we will include links to Elena's website and everything we discussed in the interview. Without further ado, here's my interview with Elena. Let's roll the tape. Hi, Elena. Hi. I'm so excited that you can make it today on the Dream Big Podcast. Yes, I'm excited too. Thank you for inviting me. (laughs) I know from my research and our audience will also probably tell from your accent that you're not originally from America. So can you share where you grew up? Yes, I'm I'm Italian and I grew up in Tuscany in a in a super small town near Florence. I hope to I hope to visit Italy someday uh, so that I can see the ancient history and also I know I'll love the food because my favorite foods are pasta, pizza. <laughs> yeah, so I would eat it I would eat pasta every night if I could. Yeah, that's what I do usually when I'm in Italy. <laughs> So I know you had a lot of success as an entrepreneur before the launch of Rebel Girls, but I wanted to ask you specifically about the Rebel Girl books. So my aunt got both sets for me through the Kickstarter campaign, and I'm sure many of our audience members have the books. But for those who don't, can you share the origin of this brilliant idea? Yes, yes, I can. Um, So the... um, the book series Good Night Stories for Rebel Girls um, was launched on Kickstarter in, in 2016, so more than three years ago now. Um, and it really started from the idea of this title. I really loved um, the title uh, that combined the element of the Good Night Stories with the element of being a rebel and especially being a rebel girl or a rebel woman, young woman, right? So Mm -hmm. um, I thought that it could be cool to have a collection of bedtime stories that instead of telling the same old stories about princesses waiting to be saved by a prince or uh, by a fairy, um, were instead willing to to take their destiny into their own hands and to fight for what they believe is right. So I thought, what if instead of telling stories about fictional princesses, we tell stories about real, extraordinary women who have done incredible, amazing stuff uh, in the past and in the present. 
So people like Cleopatra, Elizabeth I, Mary Curie, but also extraordinary, extraordinary and, and, and strong women of our time, like Serena Williams or Beyonce. So that's where the idea came from. Well, yeah, like I remember growing up and most of the books we read were Dr. Seuss or like you said, um, uh, princesses coming to be saved by a prince. And and it was just the whole story was based on that. But I love how the women profiled in the book are all real women who have done extraordinary things. And to be honest, they're all amazing. So one of the most striking components of the books that you made are the portraits on the inside. And I understand that they're all done by female artists. So how do you find all these incredible artists? Because the artwork is just truly amazing. Yes, I agree. It is. And it's definitely one of the strongest assets of, of the books. Um, so for, for those of you who, who haven't read or seen the books yet, uh, basically, each book is a collection of 100 bedtime stories, and each story um, is just two pages. And on one page to the left, uh, there's a short story about the woman who's profiled. And on the other page, on the right side, there's a beautiful illustrated portrait about the same woman. And um, I really wanted to work with lots and lots of different female artists and illustrators from all over the world because I thought that it was important for the book to have um, an extremely diversified visual style so that we could so that any any type of body and any type of cultural background could be represented because of course women especially well in all over, really, all over and across all media, but even in children's media, they tend to be represented always in the same way. And instead, we wanted to show with these portraits that women are unique and different and and they, uh, they're not the same at all. So I started to look for artists and I'm... Um, I looked for them, especially on Instagram. Instagram is a great tool to um, to scout and and discover young, talented artists. So some of them were already quite famous, but most of them uh, were not when 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 we started to work together. So it was really also like a great opportunity to to leverage the network that Rebel Girls had created in the meantime and use it as a platform to give voice to, to these um, young and talented artists from all over the world. Wow, like I just think it's great that you hired all these amazing women to do the artwork because it really fits the theme of the book because it's all about um, incredible women. So the fact that the artwork is also done by female artists is really very cool. So I'm also curious, uh, like you said, you've profiled 200 amazing women, but do you have any favorites, like any woman whose story particularly moved you? Oh yeah, there's so many of them. Uh, so one of my, one of my absolute favorites is the story of Maria Sibylla Marian, who was a German scientist, um, and in the 17th century, she discovered the metamorphosis of butterflies. At the time, nobody knew that um, butterflies uh, can and do metamorphosize. And, and Maria Sibylla Marian discovered that uh, for the first time um, by observing um, flowers and insects and and painting them because she was also a painter and you know at the time uh, women were not allowed to become scientists so it was pretty tough for her to be recognized as um, as a scientist in the in the scientific community of of Germany and and of Europe of that time, but she was so uh, determined and so persistent and strong, and she decided to 
to get on a on a on a big boat and to sail with their daughter to South America from Germany. They went all the way to Suriname because she knew that only there she could study those in, insects and she could then prove that uh, metamorphosis is real so i think i i think it, this is one of my favorite stories because it's really it really shows how adventurous women can be even when they live in very difficult circumstances and then on top of that it, it it's also a great story um of of a mother and a daughter right, right who work together and travel together across the world um, to go on this big, big adventure in, in the jungle. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, like, one of my favorites is that you feature J.K. Rowling also in the books because she's my favorite author, and I know her imagination and what she created with the Harry Potter books, which was turned into the films and theme parks, have touched, like, millions of lives. And just there are so many amazing women out there, so... Yeah. It's incredible. Also, obviously, the Rebel Girl books uh, have become much more than just the books because you have the Rebel Girls podcast, which I encourage everyone to listen to. And you also have many products, including art, stationery, and even bags. But why do you think the Rebel Girl brand has uh, resonated and became this phenomenon? Well, thank you. I, I think that uh, part of the reason why the Rebel Girls brand became so successful is that it really hit uh, a, a very, a very uh, clear need for people, for for families, for parents, for children. I think that modern families know that it's time that we tell a different kind of stories to children and that we raise them. Uh, completely free of gender stereotypes and that we uh, help them see that there really is no difference between uh, men and women and that and boys and girls and that everyone should be treated equally in the same way so uh, I think that the timing of the book was really uh, was really important and and also I think that Honestly, the um, the choice of including women from the past and women from the present and women from every corner of the globe and also from uh, every profession um, w- was a great help in 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 making this book su- successful and relatable to anyone because anyone can find a little bit of themselves represented in these profiles in these women you can either you you can you can you can be uh, uh if you want to be uh, an astronaut you're going to find an astronaut if you want to be a chef you're going to find a chef if you want to be a scientist you're going to find scientists so i think that uh the variety and the diversity of representation was also uh, one of the biggest reasons uh, behind the success of the book. That's completely amazing because I think you and your team deserve so much credit with the brilliant marketing. And I also love the name Rebel Girls. It has like a powerful feel to it. And when you read the stories of these amazing women, especially the ones that lived so long ago when women were not nearly as powerful as men in the society. The term rebel really is the perfect way to describe them. One of the coolest patterns that I notice in the stories is how many of the women will say that they were inspired by another woman. Like uh, Beyonce in her story notes said how she was inspired by Madonna. So why do you think it's so important for young girls especially to find role models that they can look up to? Oh, I think it's essential because we, I think as, as women, we don't have um, many female role models that are officially celebrated in the news or uh, on TV, uh, on, in movies. So I think it's important that we start giving more 
attention to to these incredible women so that uh, any young girl growing up can look up to them and think, oh, wow, I can also do that. I can also be that one day if I want to. And in fact, one of the most common responses that we get um, from from young girls reading our books is that they usually, after reading the books, they, they turn to their parents and they say, well, you know, one day I'll be in this book, which really proves the point that, you know, just reading about these great role models can change your attitude, can make you feel more confident and can inspire you to dream bigger. It's definitely amazing how you are just changing the world with these books because I know that later on, kids, the kids who are saying that are definitely going to be in that book. So um, before we close this interview, I have a couple last questions for you. What's your favorite thing to do when you're not working? So my favorite thing to do when I'm not working is definitely spending time with my dog, Lafayette. I have a five-month uh old puppy he's an italian hound bracco italiano is the name and he's just adorable and i love going to the beach with him uh playing chase with him sleeping (laughs) with him (laughs) because he sleeps a lot and watching documentaries with him he loves documentaries just like me we so we spend a lot of time uh watching netflix together so he's a he's a lot of fun (laughs) Yeah, I have a dog, too, named Annie, and she loves just watching me watch TV. So also, um, how do you think Rebel Girls has impacted like on your life? Well, it changed my life in many ways. Well, first of all, it gave me a new great reason to keep doing what I'm doing and uh, to keep building my my company and and growing it so um, and also it gave me made me feel at the same time so stronger and so much more empowered than I than I did before and less scared you know of uh, whatever it is that I am that I'm facing in my life If you go back in time and talk to her 10-year-old self, what would be the best advice? Well, I think that the best, I was a very quiet and uh, very diligent uh, student and and daughter. So I think the best advice I could give to my 10-year-old self would be to not be afraid of being who you are and, and being different. That's amazing. So I know you have already made many of your dreams a reality, but if you look at yourself today, what is your big dream for the future? Um, in the future, mm, let's see. Um, I think that you know one of my one of my biggest dreams is to is to help more young girls write stories about themselves, their lives, or whatever they think it's important and relevant in the world. I'm a journalist by by training. My background is in journalism. And I do believe that stories and storytelling can change the world, can have an impact in the world. And, and now with Rebel Girls, I have a great opportunity of doing it uh, through storytelling. So one of my biggest dreams is to to start uh, together with the books and the podcasts and uh, and everything else that we're producing to also start offering uh, scholarships for for girls who want to to write and uh, and workshops for girls who don't necessarily have access to the best educational resources but um, need nonetheless to, to be empowered. Uh, by storytelling. That's amazing. And we only have time for one last question. So where can our audience find out more about you? So, yeah, there's a few places where you can follow me and my work. Um, So you can find me on Instagram. uh, And my my Instagram account is uh, Elena Favilli. You can find me on Twitter 
uh, and and then of course you can find me on Rebel Girls. Our website is rebelgirls.co, and we're we're actually about to launch a new a brand new digital magazine in in a few weeks in July. So you will definitely be able to find me there. Thank you so much, Lena. Just remember, everyone out there, uh, follow your big dreams and dream big. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was amazing. I just love Elena's story and the mission behind Goodnight Stories for Rebel Girls and the entire brand. Thank you, Elena, for your time and for all the great tips and lessons you taught our big dreamers. As always, all the links to everything we discuss are in our show notes at dreambigpodcast.com slash 142. Did you enjoy this special episode? If so, please tell your friends and family about the Dream Big Podcast. If everyone listening could just tell one person about this episode, that would lead to a chain reaction that would get the Dream Big Podcast in front of so many new people, which would be amazing. If you haven't already, be sure to hit the subscribe button so that you can be notified whenever we release a new episode. Finally, if you're interested in being part of the Dream Big Academy, please go to dreambigpodcast.com slash beta. And right now, we are giving away the free Confidence Secrets course. Have your parents go to dreambigpodcast.com slash beta to get the free Confidence Secrets course that includes over one hour of me teaching you how to become more confident, which is the key to achieving your big dreams. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is Eva Cartman reminding you that you have unlimited potential. Your dreams are not optional. You need to make them essential. So take massive action to get those big dreams into reality. Live with passion, the way life was meant to be. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.